background uh, to this interpretation center that we're standing in front of and uh, we're going to be unveiling in just a few moments time but just before that i'd like to introduce the minister of water and environmental affairs uh, minister edna molewa it was a pleasure to have you on the program thank you very much indeed for joining us thank you very much peter and thank you Ed. good morning to all of you now, what a lot of people might not know is that uh, the department uh, offers a lot of support to the national parks. And I'm just wondering, perhaps, if you can enlighten us a little bit, um, what sort of support do you give uh, to the parks? Let me just start by saying that the uh, South African National Parks is part of uh, the department. It's actually a delivery arm of, of the department, and therefore... There's a lot that we do together. In order for us to actually develop a park like this, there are several programs like uh, your expanded public works programs, uh, wherein we do roads, uh, paving, and so on. But also support generally in terms of ensuring that uh, the national parks deliver on its mandate in terms of how we should. On a week like this one, which is a national parks week, we are here to actually, on an annual basis we do this, mm -hmm. to ensure that that which is part of our past, uh, of uh, just leaving part of our community outside the parks. Because, I mean, when we grew up, we never knew what's happening behind these bushes out there. That which was always, you know, applicable is a thing of the past. And therefore, we bring people into right. parks. Let's move you forward. We bring people into parks and ensure that uh, they too get exposed to what's happening in the parks. It's part of cultural learning. Uh, learning about our heritage, understanding exactly the wealth of our country because it is important for our people to know their own spaces and places. The young generation are brought here, people are, are brought here also for learning, but for understanding the dynamism between nature and the people. Because it's important that they too grow up knowing exactly what's happening behind them. But parks like these ones also are a place, in other words I can say, actually an economic hub. Right of a country in the middle of Norway, if you like. I mean, we're here in Mukala. You can't find BMW here. This is our BMW for, of this area <laughs> as a factory and a big one for the people who are here. So there's a lot of entrepreneurship that's happening in this area. So we're really getting people involved uh, in programs like people and the parks uh, and so on. So it's really where a whole host of activities are happening. And we want South Africans to know there's a number of people a very, very huge number, which has been brought into the parks. People who never knew, by the way, they are actually getting free, uh, getting in here free of charge for this whole week uh, and throughout the country. So do you make use of this opportunity, South Africans. All right. So my question to you is, uh, have you got a favorite park? <laughs> I, I, all, all of them are my favorite parts. <laughs> Remember, I also come from a background of having, you know, having been an MEC from the Northwest Province uh, uh, environment. So I used to be asked this question, have you got a favorite park? Yeah. Our parks have got different emphasis. Yeah. So it's not easy to say which one do I like. Mm -hmm. There's an emphasis of, uh, you know, for instance, uh, just uh, animal life in some parks, and in some parks it's water features, uh, you know, and things like that. So they really differ from place to place, or crabbies with waterfalls and so on. So you love all of them because they're all part of nature. I do. So now, uh, one of the reasons that we're standing in front of this uh, uh, space here is that uh, we have the interpretation center that's uh, going to be officially unveiled by you. But we're also joined by the premier of the Northern Cape, um, uh, Sylvia Lucas. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And can I just ask the two of you, ladies, to uh, unveil this plaque, which will signify the opening of the interpretation center. And I'm hoping we're going to get lots of reaction from the people that are behind us as well. So on three, you're going to officially open this interpretation center. One, two, three. Yay, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, South African National Parks Interpretation Center is now officially open. And on the plaque, it says the Makala Interpretive Center was officially opened by the Minister of, uh, and, uh, of Water and Environmental Affairs, uh, the Honorable B. E. Malewa MP, on the 9th of September 2013. So now this is a, a place that you all want to visit and come and see. And uh, uh, the interpretation centers are uh, happening in other parks as well and this is the latest one should we go inside minister and uh, have a look see what this interpretation center looks like and uh, get an experience 
uh, from for our viewers. Um, and I know that uh, we're going to be met by uh, David Morris. David, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Now, David Morris uh, works with the McGregor Museum in Kimberley and uh, was responsible for a lot of the information that's here. Uh, David, tell us a little bit about what people will be able to experience here. What kind of information is there? Let's, uh, let's take a look. Well, um, we have uh, a very broad overview um, yep. providing background information on the, uh, the, the geological history, the, the very deep past, um, the, the origins of, um, of, of uh, human history in this area, archaeology, uh, the Stone Age, um, and the, the display then uh, t takes up the, the more recent history um, with some background to the, the environment of the park. And I would imagine, Minister, this kind of thing is important because it gives people uh, a richer experience of the park, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, you can imagine how many people may never have known about our own historical uh, Stone Age, uh, you know, that kind of uh, work artwork and so on evolving into today and having put this interpretive center does actually give that information from back then stone age and into the future and i think we really appreciate the fact that we can in here as i said this is a a an economic hub in the middle of nowhere people who will be coming here will now know the history of south africa our own geology uh, geological history and even heritage uh, as a whole. I think it's quite good. Thank you. So, so David, what's quite unique and special about this part of the world? Um, well, uh, the Northern Cape, I think, has a, a spectacular um, Stone Age past, um, a very interesting history. Um, frontier uh, era is, is, is really a fascinating part of South Africa's history. Um, some really spectacular finds have been made in this part of the world in, over the last year in particular. And you must be quite proud, Premier, of uh, this part of, of, of the country. Uh, for sure. You know, I was just saying on Friday to people, our natural heritage and our cultural heritage is something that we need to cherish. Because uh, it, it sometimes so happens that people doesn't realize what we have to offer. And in, in, in opening up centers like that, people begin to realize that we've got a lot more to offer as the Northern Cape. And as also in terms of our cultural and natural heritage, there is a lot more that we can offer. And we must thank those who put together this interpretive uh, center because it will help also our school children and all the people that are coming into the box. Right. Well, luckily we're going to have a, another chat with you a little bit later on so you can tell us a little bit more about uh, this area. But also, if you want to visit, uh, one of the things that, uh, of course, that you will need to do is uh, sleep somewhere. And there's lots of great accommodation in this part of the world. And uh, we've put together this little package for you so you can get a good sense of uh, the kind of accommodation that's available. Let's take a look. Um, we currently have three uh, main lodges. Um, one lodge is uh, situated on the Ret Ret River, um, close to Lilydale, uh, or it's named Lilydale. Uh, it's got 12 quarters there, which are mostly family units, um, and quite affordable overlooking the river. Um, another one is the main lodge, Morsu Lodge, um, which ranges from luxury units um, to family units, as well as non-catering units where you'll be able to use a restaurant. A uh, restaurant um, is one of uh, the only restaurants in Sand Parks that uh, provides its own venison uh, meat. Um, another lodge that we also have is Mufele, which is based on the EE Centre, uh, where we are involved with the Sand Parks and the Department of Education to bring in underprivileged kids into uh, wilderness areas such as Mukala and give them the opportunity to experience the wildlife that they would never have that opportunity. Um, so that's based around that and the Mufele Lodge can sleep up to about 60 people, um, mostly bunk beds but it's um, got the facilities of a conference center as well as um, bomas and completely kitted out. And then we've got two, well one main campsite um, which is Mutswedi. 
Um, Matwedi has got six luxury campsites which are completely kitted out with a gas uh, fridge freezer compartment, gas burners, uh, solar, um, solar powered water uh, warmed he heaters, uh, geysers and so on as well as uh, bry facilities and so on. They all overlook a watering hole uh, so you can s just sit back and watch the game at your own leisure. And then we've got um, Hakenstierk which is behind me here. Uh, just re recently been revamped and it facilitates, it's got a double bed, uh, two single beds, uh, stove, fridge, um, warm, warm water etc. But it's also got the five rye areas here with you. So if you also got a big family you, uh, group that would like to come with you, uh, they all also overlook the watering hole over here close by. So yeah, if you, you can go out, watch the game uh, on a game drive and so on, otherwise you can sit back and watch the game at your own leisure at the end of the day. Yeah.